All right, bom dia, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to expose the exposer. But first of all, I'm going to talk about Mark chapter 16, verse 8. Let me read it for you. Verse 8, and, it's, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. All right, so the this is alleged to be a contradiction. Now, let me just stay in Mark 16. All right, and just show you something here. Oh, verse 7, right there. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. Okay, so um, this is when Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and um, they went to the grave where Jesus had been laid. And uh, they get there and he's not there. Okay, now, here we see, it says uh, that um, the young man right here is an angel, and they say, uh, you know, go your way and tell his disciples and Peter uh, that he goes before you into Galilee, all right? So the angels are telling Mary and Mary to go and tell his disciples. And that's what they do. First of all, we have to start with the premise that every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. All right, so every word of God has to be pure. If it's a contradiction, it cannot be the pure word of God. It can't be. All right, even Jesus himself says the scripture cannot be broken. You cannot have a contradiction. Period. Alright, so this cannot be a contradiction. Now, here they are told to go tell the disciples, and here it says they went out quickly and said, Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. So, um, <laughs> okay. Forgive me, because this is, it's so ridiculous to suggest this is a contradiction. It's a willful misunderstanding. All right, now consider this. If you do not believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, it only makes sense that you don't understand what this is saying. Alright, so in Matthew 28, we see the same event. <clears throat> Alright, so, um, so here again, go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word all right now that's Matthew 28 okay and as they went to tell his disciples all right and they did tell the disciples all right, in Luke 24 again same thing and as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces, right? And they, and 
told, let's see right there, and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the leaven and to all the rest. So they clearly told what they saw. Even John 20. First day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early. All right. Then she runs and comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Okay? So clearly, 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 they went and told the disciples just like they were told to do. All right. Now, <laughs> this is not complicated. Okay. So let's go slow. Let's go very slow. All right, let's start at the top. And when the Sabbath had passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Solomon, or Sol, excuse me, Salome. Salome. Am I saying that right? Salome. 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 Okay. All right, whatever. Who cares? Okay, and had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away us the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted, or affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. As he said unto you, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast, cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. Okay. Now, there's a lot here. All right. So, I think you have to imagine what it would have been like in that moment. In that moment when they came to the tomb of Jesus and saw that he was not there and then on top of that appears to them angels and the overwhelming sense or the overwhelming knowledge that hey Jesus has risen from the grave they <laughs> wow they were amazed they were they trembled and they were amazed they were their minds were blown right they would have been astonished. They would have been in awe and in shock in that moment. 
I, I don't think I can imagine what it was like in that moment. In that moment. They fled from the sepulcher. They quickly went out. And they were still shaken. They were still in shock. They were still in amazement and awe of what they were witnessing. It had to have been absolutely incredible. And so they go out. In that moment, they don't say anything. Right? Well, once they gather themselves, once they collect themselves, then they say something, don't they? I mean, that's it. That's not a contradiction. That's an understanding of what the simple scripture is saying. All right, now consider the opposite, okay? Let's consider the opposite, okay? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. All right, so let's consider the opposite. Let's consider what you're saying when you say this is a contradiction. What you're saying is that they went out and the scripture is saying that they never said anything to any man and then they died. Well, they never said anything for the rest of their life. They neither said they anything to any man forever and ever. I mean, just be honest. Is that what you believe that's saying right there? That's not even, that's not even rational. That's irrational. So is it incorrect for that to say what it says? Or is it just that you're willingly trying to see a contradiction? Well, if you if you want to believe, if, I mean, look, if you don't believe this is the Word of God, you're not going to understand what the Bible says. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Why? Because they don't believe. Right? They don't believe. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall t be taken away. It only makes sense that people that don't believe the Bible are going to say, well, this is a contradiction. It's not a contradiction. It's a lack of understanding. If you don't get it, then there's something wrong with your heart. Right? There's something wrong with your heart. Even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Alright, so there's something wrong with your heart if you believe there's a contradiction. This is clearly speaking of that moment because they clearly said something. Now, okay, now the other, the other thing I wanted to show real quickly is that in order to believe this is a contradiction, you have to believe for hundreds of years, even a thousand, two thousand years, that nobody was able to see this. Right? Because you, the people that say this is a contradiction are saying that the Bible's been changed. Well, if they're changing the Bible, 
refining it or whatever you want to say. And nobody could see this. I mean, within its own chapter, you're claiming there's a contradiction because they are told to tell the disciples and then it says they said nothing to any man and then it says she went and told them <laughs> God, I mean you gotta be I don't want to say dumber than dog do that wouldn't be very nice but it takes a willful misunderstanding you're trying to misunderstand you're trying to see something that simply is not there okay now I was gonna expose this guy here I'm not sure I want to you know this guy exposes Ehrman Bert Bert Ehrman um, he calls him a a Bible scholar <laughs> like a Bible scholar what's a Bible scholar really a Bible scholar that does not believe the Bible they're gonna they're not gonna understand nothing if Bert Ehrman I don't care what Bible seminary school he went to or maybe he taught He's, maybe he's got all these uh, access to all these uh, manuscripts that the Vatican has. <laughs> I don't mean nothing. You know, what's that? You know, he's got more knowledge than you? Is that what that means? No. No. You're making the Bible out to be a liar. You're making God out to be a liar. When you claim Bible scholars say this Bible scholars say that Bible experts you don't that don't that there is no such thing I mean unless you want to claim yourself claim yourself you read the Bible well that's great it's not gonna do you any good if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is directly from God. It'll do you no good at all because you won't understand it. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the dummies like you and me, making wise the simple. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The word of God is sharp. Wait, what's that? Um, the word of God is... Oh, I forget the verse. Oh my goodness. For the word of God is quick. There we go. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, is this talking about ancient Manuscripts that exist in dead languages? Is that what this was referring to? No, of course not. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven